Hey, welcome back to the podcast. My name is Rob Balasabas. Really glad to have you here. Uh, welcome back to the Coffee with Creators podcast. Uh, today, I don't have coffee. I actually have water this afternoon. It is um, March 5th, Tuesday, uh, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, yeah, just winding down my my day here and uh, we've got a busy evening ahead of us um, but um, yeah really excited for this episode this episode is actually going to be an interview with uh, a good friend of mine Daniel Kosmala who is uh, the head of uh, customer marketing I want to say um, here at Uscreen but uh, title is important but also uh, doesn't capture everything that he does here at Uscreen it does so much you know, from YouTube to customer marketing to uh, email sequences and overseeing our team that does a lot of that stuff and man uh, managing our video team I mean he does so much and you're gonna learn and you're gonna meet all about um, Daniel you're gonna meet him you're gonna learn all about him and just what he does here he's he's an awesome guy he's a fellow dad like myself and so we talked a lot about uh, the creator economy kind of what's happening with the creator economy whether you know what are the opportunities what he's seeing in the creator economy and where the opportunities are happening, where it's going, um, you know, all the sort of things that are happening in that space. That's that's something that we kind of live and breathe uh, on a daily basis here. Um, and uh, but also you're going to see him uh, a side of him uh, that is uh, that I really admire, which is, you know, his side where he is a father. He's a dad. He's a husband. Um, he's got he's got uh, some awesome, awesome kids that I can see on Instagram. And uh, he shares a lot of that as well um, on Instagram. And, um, you know, it just really shines when you when you get to hear him really speak about, you know, his role as a dad and kind of what he is doing there is just really endearing to, to kind of listen and, and also learn from, you know. So, um, yeah, really excited for you guys to meet him. Uh, but before I do, I wanted to kind of see what are some dad jokes that you guys really enjoy. Uh, I want to share a couple with you guys, but I want to also hear from you guys that, you know, on any dad jokes that you guys are seeing out there. Uh, I'm going to close this door really quick. But uh, there's an Instagram account um, that I like. There's a few of these accounts. Uh, but there's in an Instagram account called uh, at dad says jokes. Dad says jokes. It's a couple, couple of really good jokes here <laughs> recently. I love seeing these. Okay, so the first one is here. Here goes the first one, all right? First dad joke. I want to hear yours too. Uh, it goes, I told my contractor I didn't want carpeted steps. And he gave me a blank stare. Stare? S-T-A-I-R. Because he didn't want carpeted steps. Get it? Okay. Uh, really. <laughs> and then there's another one that says, science puns make me numb, but math puns make me number because <laughs> number yeah anyways uh so go check out their account dad says jokes um and uh and send me your dad jokes as well all right we really love these i love these can't get enough of these dad jokes so uh with that said um yeah make sure you uh say hello to daniel uh connect with him uh you're gonna i'm gonna include links to all his stuff linkedin instagram and all that stuff and also i just launched um my newsletter so it's going to be a weekly newsletter i sent my first uh sort of broadcast in quite some time um yesterday no uh i want to say this morning this morning and so uh, i'll actually include a link it's going to be a for now it's going to be the plan is a weekly newsletter every sunday um and so i uh, would love for you to subscribe to it if you're not subscribed yet it's going to be a really simple really short and sweet newsletter each week a uh, couple of thoughts that comes from, you know, it's coming from me, some things that I'm seeing in the creator economy, some updates and insights, uh, some content that I'm sharing, and also a little bit of, um, you know, updates on the family side of my life that you don't see necessarily on LinkedIn. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so make sure you subscribe to that. I'll put a link to uh, to subscribe to the newsletter in the uh, description or in the pod uh, in the show notes uh, below. All right. So uh, with that said, uh, excited for you to meet my good friend, Daniel Kosmala. Feeling better this week, looks like. <laughs> yeah. With uh, with three young kids, somebody is always sick and it's a toss up as to whether that includes me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, bring something home from school or whatever, right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Always. Somebody's always got a runny nose. Somebody's always coughing at a bare minimum. Yeah, at least, at least. Yep. Um, awesome, dude. Well, really glad to have you here. Uh, obviously, uh, we have an audience of creators, uh, all sorts of creators, in-house creators, you know, there's full-time creators, all sorts. Uh, so um, that's who they are. But uh, just uh, take a few minutes, 
couple minutes uh, and just introduce yourself, what you do uh, there at Uscreen, and uh, yeah, and then we'll uh, jump to some questions. Cool. Well, thanks for having me, Rob. I'm Daniel Kosmala. Um, I work at Uscreen as uh, I don't even know how to begin. I started at Uscreen as a video creator. We'll just start there, uh, and that was over four years ago. Uh, my background, I've been making dumb videos with friends uh, since I was in high school. When I was in college, I worked as a uh, manager of, of a Division I men's basketball team here in the U.S. and uh, used money from that job because uh, I did get paid and worked way too much for a student. Um, but I took that money and went, went out and bought my first digital camera because um, I had been I'd used a film camera previously to take photos. And so I went out and bought a Canon T2i. And then over the years, just kind of kept up that skill uh, doing shooting videos for friends, making dumb videos for me at home or uh, talking to the camera because I actually uh, early on in my career was like, you know what? It's probably a valuable skill to be able to like be comfortable on camera. And I am not like I get sweaty pits and like Eminem and eight mile, like mom spaghetti all over my sweater. So I would set up my camera in my living room when my wife went to work, she works night shift, and I would just talk to the camera and be super awkward and uncomfortable. And then I'd go watch the footage back, which I wish I'd kept and just like archived and never let it see in the light of day. But to be able to reference it now, I wish I would have pulled, like kept some of it because I would just delete it because I thought it was so cringy. But I would write down notes of like, your body language looks weird here, your hand gestures, oh, wow. super awkward, your facial, uh, your facial movements are weird or like you're not smiling enough. I'd go like really deep or like you're being too loud or you're being too monotonous and you need to like kind of take your voice up and then back down and kind of take people on a journey. So I like analyzed myself wow. years before I ever joined Uscreen. Uh, and so when it came time to like shoot a vid video to send to our CEO, founder at the time to like apply for the job, yeah. I was like not super nervous about it. I talked too much, but it, I was not nervous about it. So did that. Uh, I actually worked in marketing during the days uh, in all kinds of roles. Uh, at small organizations went through a acquisition of 300 company at one point, um, but always did video on the side. And then when I got to Uscreen, I kind of started getting to combine both video and marketing experiences. And now here we are four years later, I'm a senior marketing manager at Uscreen. I still lead our video team and get to make videos every now and then. Uh, and have my hands on a few other things as well. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You got uh, it, actually. It's really hard for me to describe what you do because it's like so much and like your title. Because you know, oftentimes I'll introduce it's you gone. to different partners and people, and like Daniel's yeah, the guy. It's gone all <laughs> over the place. Yeah. For a while, it was like video creator, and then it was like video. I, I don't even remember what it was. Video expert and creator, and, and then it was video. like. I think at some point. Marketing gone. person, and then customer marketing, and then it was just like you know what. Let's just like make this a little bit more generic. So senior marketing manager, great. We'll just roll with that for now, because that that means because I've I've worked on campaigns at Uscreen, I've worked with customers, I've kind of like product managed a product being developed, and then obviously through all of that, I've worked with video. So yeah. kind of a little bit all over the place, which is somewhat reflective of my experiences prior to com coming to Uscreen. Like I was somewhat of a Swiss army knife at other yeah. organizations. So yeah, 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 kind of similar. I kind of come with like, kind of all hand, like doing a bunch of different things. But um, but you for some history, you, you've you've been at you screen for almost no three years, four years, uh, it was it was four years in August, four years in August. Okay, so you've seen it. So yeah. you, when you joined you screen, how big was the company just for some context? Uh, I was like number 13 or 14 wow. at the company crazy and now before the pandemic yeah yeah and then we are now around 130 140 i think yeah right mm -hmm. yeah yeah was there um was there a an inflection point where things were growing but then like at some point it got a, a, more different than the normal changes like <laughs> a, a, yeah. a certain i mean headcount where things changed a bit more than normal so i i'd come from smaller companies like right, right. my first job out of college i was one of two employees and then the next one i was like one of eight and the next one after that i was one of two again and then we got acquired and that was like one of a whole division inside of a large company so like yeah. i'd seen a few different scenarios but when i joined august of 2019 there were 14 people and it 
Christmas that year, 2019, yeah. we had like a company holiday call and there were like 24 people on that call. And I was like, yo, that is a lot of growth. Like 10 people it's in like three or four months is a lot. Yeah. Uh, that makes me nervous. Like yeah, it's yeah. a good nervous, but I'm still nervous. Uh, and so at that point I was like, wow, we're like, we're, we're growing. That's a good thing. Uh, and then the pandemic hit three months later. Mm. And I remember that was, that was just a crazy year because everyone else was panicking. Like people were losing their jobs. A lot of people were furloughed yeah. and on our side of things, like the number of inbound leads we got in a month, like five X oh, almost overnight. It was crazy. Uh, and so then it was like, it was almost like every day in Slack, it was like, welcome this person to the team <laughs> like to the point where it was hard to keep track of because there was just always a new person being added and teams expanding to like mat match the demand that we were seeing. So that was pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, and just trying to keep up with all of the changes was oh, wild. And not to mention, we were all like trying to figure out how to live through a global pandemic for the first time. I had a my second son was born in April of 2020 and it was just like, this is a lot at once to process. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Lots going on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine that was a crazy time. And so you were working on your own, like video, like your, de your department was you. And it you was just me. Yeah. PJ, you were reporting directly yep. to, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. That's it was awesome. a wild time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's like, I mean, there's a handful of, um, there's probably more than a handful, but there's a lot of companies that did really well during the pandemic, right? As, as bad as right. the pandemic was, and obviously, um, yeah, it, it definitely, uh, there's a lot of companies that did really well, um, you know, during that time and kind of, right. you know, sort of, you know, uh, got out of it growing and continued to grow and, you know, uh, whole industries were built around the pandemic. So, yeah, it's really, right. really interesting to share that. Um, okay, man. Well, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of different ways we can go with this podcast. I think about you and, you know, we got to hung, hang out a lot and yeah, different conferences. I want to talk to you, man. You're like crushing it on, uh, on like dad life on that, in that hashtag on Instagram, you're killing it. Um, you know, creator economy, you get to talk to a lot of creators. So, um, mm -hmm. but like, I would love to hear kind of what's on your heart right now as, um, around the creator economy. Like what, what's on your mind? How do you feel about yeah. it? Yeah, like what's 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 keeping like space inside your in your brain around creators and and creator economy media industry? Yeah, uh, I forget who it was. I saw somebody post on LinkedIn a while back, and it was like you know um, a typical not adoption curve, but like mm. I don't know how to describe it, like uh, industry maturity kind of trend. And the typical is like, you see this big, you'll see a big spike. It's the kind of what we saw happen with the creator economy is the same thing we saw happen with kind of crypto, right? Like there was right. a huge spike, yep. everything went crazy and then it started to come down and then it cra kind of crashed yep. and bottomed out and then it like normalized itself. Yep. And so some, there was this big curve, it was like a big spike, a huge dip and then kind of a normal uptick off into the, the sunset. Yep. And somebody posted that and was like, where do you think we are in terms of this graph with the creator economy? And I thought it was, it was a really interesting discussion that was happening in the comments because most people were like, oh, we've bottomed out and now we're, you know, in the growth phase. Yeah. And I think that's interesting and think? probably accurate. Yeah. Okay. Um, like I, I think we, we all, like we all saw the peak, um, uh, the frenzy, like when all these create companies were getting ridiculous amounts of VC money and stuff like, uh, who is it? Like spotter jellyfish or jelly smack, <laughs> not jellyfish, <laughs> jelly smack, yeah. uh, juice, all those, um, like a bunch of those companies got so much money. We even, we saw competitors popping up out of the woodwork and it was like, Oh, raises money, raises money, raises like, uh, Patreon got $120 million or whatever in the last couple of years. Yep. It was like just this frenzy. And now we're already seeing some of those companies start to like fall out of the market. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Um, so 
most people seem to think that we're like past that big bottom, the big dip. I think that's probably right. But I think we're closer to the bottom of that crash still than a lot of other people. Not to say that I think everything's crashing. I just think that there's still so much upside to the creator economy. Um, and everyone's more real. Everyone's gotten a lot more realistic about it. Right. Like it was one of those things during the pandemic, we were all locked up. It was like creator economy, this creator economy, that like, it just, it was like crypto. It's like Bitcoin to 60,000, Bitcoin to a hundred thousand, Dogecoin to the moon. It was like creator economy to the moon. Yeah. And it was like, all right, can we like stop with the craziness? <laughs> um, and so I think things are a bit more realistic now. And we saw this when we were at Vid Summit um, recently, which is a great conference for YouTubers, uh, if you're not familiar with it. Um, but w what I see every year when I, this was my, I don't know, third or fourth year in a row at Vid Summit, probably third, I think, since the pandemic. Because um, they took one year and digit, did it digital. Uh, and I've been in person after that. But every year, there's kind of, we, as we represent Uscreen, we've gotten different vibes from creators. So like the first year I went, which was right after the pandemic. So this was probably 2021. Had, yeah, had to have been 2021. People would come up to you screen and be like, what do you do? And we'd explain like video memberships and they would just kind of look at us What's and be like, membership? <laughs> you know. huh? And so then like we continue the, the conversation and help them re reach that aha moment. But it would take a couple minutes of like back and forth with them, like trying to pin it down with something they already knew in their mind that they could relate it to or help identify it. And then two years ago or in 2022, um, we went and that conversation took less time. People would come up and we'd say, we help creators build video memberships. It's a white label experience, blah, blah, blah. And they would, they'd be like, oh, that's cool. So it's kind of like Netflix, you know, they, they'd immediately, they maybe a, a little bit faster, have that recognition of what it is, what it could do. And then this year people just got it. Like they didn't, it was not that back and forth. It was like, oh yeah, that's great. That's awesome. How much can I make doing that? Mm, yeah. Or like, what kind of creator is this best for? It was interesting to see the shift from previous years of the back and forth and people taking a little bit longer to understand. And then this year, people being like, I get it. That's awesome. Now, how do I evaluate this as a business opportunity for myself, which in previous years was not really something that people were doing quickly. That was like, they'd walk away and then like two weeks later, it would hit them and they'd be like, oh, I wonder if this would be a good business model for me. That's happening faster and faster, which means the market is maturing getting more realistic and that's what we saw at vid summit was everyone or not everyone most of the creators there are learning networking growing whatever but they're all they were all like evaluating what opportunities were available for them to get better at what they do or to make more money doing what they do and i thought that that was an interesting shift we had not seen um in previous years uh, and something for us to keep in mind uh as we work on our day-to-day -day. but like creators are more savvy than ever the education curve is moving faster than ever for them. So like they're more ready for us or more ready for a solution like you screen. So I think it's interesting, but I still think it's like near the bottom of that building back. I think there's so much, uh, I don't want to use like buzzwords. <laughs> there's just a lot of, uh, potential for the creator economy still. Um, yeah. So that that's kind of how I'm thinking about it. There's, I think there's still a ton of untapped opportunity and a lot of potential. I think it's all just more normalized and realistic now than it was when the hype train was blasting through town a couple of years ago. Totally, totally, yeah. Um, yeah, I like what you said there about... Yeah, it's interesting your, your insight on the questions that people are asking now uh, about memberships. Um, you know, there's... there's a, I mean, memberships has been around for a while, right? Like amongst creators, but you know, right. screen has been around for what seven, eight years. Correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. roughly. Um, and there's been creators since the early days that are have been raking in some good money and good revenue around memberships and recurring revenue. Um, right. And I do feel like I, g I agree with you. I think I feel like this year it's a lot easier to talk about. They already know what memberships is. Um, yeah. Do you feel? Do you think that that's because? 
there's just more creators doing it it's becoming more mainstream like what between this year and last year in bid summit world uh time frame like what's changed what where did, do you think there's some milestones or some like some events mm. or factors that help mm. that um and then also what can we do to continue <laughs> pushing that till next year too that next year the conversations are even more right you know, uh, i think a lot of it is natural evolution and e like education yeah, yeah. um if I try to think of like landmark things that could have shifted the tide of that, the, those larger conversations, uh, I think a lot of it comes down to the unpredictability of a lot of the revenue streams available, mm -hmm. especially for a creator who's not massive, mm -hmm. right? Because like, if you have an audience of a million plus subscribers, making a full time income is generally like, you should be doing it. You should be able to like replace your full-time job if you have a million plus followers on any platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're smaller than that, like, and I re I'm really thinking like 50,000 50, subscribers or 100,000, I'm thinking about this really through the lens of YouTube, 50 to 100,000 yeah. plus, yeah. but not, not to 500 or even 700 or a million. That... Is a, it's a little less clear. It's just like, oh, I've got to be on the ra the the treadmill of AdSense, Brand which means I have to keep publishing to get more money, mm -hmm. affiliate links, mm -hmm. sponsorships, mm -hmm. maybe merchandise uh, if I want to get into a physical product or print on demand, which I know is low hanging fruit for a lot of people. Or then you get into like selling your own digital product, and. I think a lot of those just leave a certain level of unpredictability mm -hmm. and instability that makes it challenging for a creator who's not at that million plus threshold to be like, yeah, I'm going to go quit my day job and go all in on this because I'm making enough to replace that. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's really challenging. And so finding people are looking for more stability, like they're looking for sponsorships that will lock in for 12 months, right? Like right. I think right. of... um Lizzie Pierce, who is a photographer, videographer, and she, I know for a fact, she, she has to have signed some so, sort of long-term sponsorship deal with Squarespace because she's been running. She'll be like, this video is sponsored by Squarespace and it's an ad read. She, she filmed like 10 months ago in a studio she doesn't even have anymore. Right. And she'll sl split that into a video. And so like she did that for her brand because she was searching for stability and that was the best option for her at that time which is great but not all creators are going to be able to negotiate that well for themselves not all creators want to do that kind of integration for 12 months that kind of after a few months especially for viewers gets like a little yeah. stagnant a yeah. little flat mm -hmm. uh and i think the the brand ends up being like the the loser in terms of value there yeah. and i think viewers are getting more savvy like they see that on lizzie's channel and they're like yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I've seen, I th right? I've seen this already. Yeah, so I think people are looking for these things, and it's like affiliate links. Like, sure, you can you'll get uh, you can get to a point where it's like, yeah, I know. Predict generally, I'm gonna make X amount a month from this, mm -hmm. but scaling up from there is challenging. You don't get to control affiliate percentages. Like Amazon changed theirs a year or two ago and like cut percentages quite a bit um you get into merchandise that's the same thing kind of unpredictable you, you could do merch drops but then again not predictable so there's just all these things building and it's like memberships are something you get to take control of right right like that's why i think patreon has done so well and patreon's really like paved the way for this in a lot of a lot of different ways is that they were like they're an OG platform. People are used to it. Yep. Uh, you go and you pay X amount a month and you get you know, whatever perks or access to the creator. And that was fine back in the day, but like people want more. They expect more. Like we're moving towards more premium experiences. Prices are going up on everything. Like we want to get good things for our money and going and paying for a non-branded experience on a Patreon or whatever isn't a great experience anymore. So I think creators are looking to evolve 
and naturally the market has like shifted to what how do we get them that stable predictable recurring revenue and also enable these creators to build and own their own like more premium experiences that they can charge more for and ask for it on an ongoing monthly basis rather than like for a t-shirt or uh an ebook or whatever or like a workout plan or something like that so i think that that we're seeing a lot of these kind of factors shift and move things into place like that yeah. what do you think yeah i agree with you i think that evolution of what you just shared about you know making money from the platform making money from uh, affiliates um and that these are all still like the last piece that people are really or creators are scared to make money from is their own audience so that's why you mentioned like courses, digital products, which you have to sell to your audience is typically second to last. And then the last one that they approach is then like memberships, because I think you're selling to your audience and you're asking them for money every month. <laughs> courses, you just yeah. ask for money once. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I would love to see a, a world where more creators have this because a lot of them will have to leave what they're doing because, yeah, brand deals get pushed, uh, pulled back and, um, you know, uh, AdSense dips. Like I was ta uh, last week, I was talking to a couple of creators, and they're like, "Yeah, man, like our our AdSense is like dropped by fifty percent, mm. and that's a majority of our revenue." Um, and also at the same time, some of our sponsors are ta starting to pull back. So it's like, "What do mm. I do? What do I do?" You know. Um, whereas you gotta get comfortable selling yourself <laughs> and yeah. selling your products because you know that you have value to provide and you can help people achieve something. Something. What is a sort of similarity? Because you, again, you get to talk to a lot of creators as well um, that are successful mm. in memberships. What trait or what's the characteristic that you that a lot of them have similar that allows them to get outside of just making money from the platform or brands that they're able to position their content, their offering yeah. to their audience and their audience is willing to pay for it? Like what is like a characteristic there that maybe a lot of creators have, but they just haven't realized they need. Yeah, that's a, uh, is it just like, I feel courage? like I've been, is it like straight up? Courage? I feel like I've been asked like a similar, no, I don't, I don't think it's courage. Uh, courage. I think it's, it's great to have that. Yeah. Um, I think you have, it's focus. Focus. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause I talk, I've talked to hundreds of our customers probably yeah. in the last year or two, a lot, a lot of them one-to-one -one in groups and all like in person, all sorts of different scenarios. Yeah. And I've talked to ones that are very successful. I've also talked to a, a number that are struggling and they're like, I don't know what to do. And I think the one that the thing that the successful ones all share in common is that they know what to focus on and they don't get distracted by shiny objects very very easily like they're very good at evaluating opportunities and being objective about themselves and about their membership and what they're doing so like uh what i mean by focus is like i think of i'll think of just a random creator who's like hey this isn't my membership isn't going the way i wanted and here's what i'm doing can you help me figure out what's wrong and then they'll be like i'm publishing on youtube every week I'm publishing on Instagram every day. I'm posting to Twitter. I'm also posting to Facebook. I have a private Facebook group that's free that leads into my membership. Uh, and then I have a newsletter as well. And I'm like, okay, uh, how many people are on your team? And they're like, well, it's just me. I'm like, well, that, that's your problem. <laughs> I'm so sorry to, to be the one to tell you this, but like, you can't do all of that. You just can't. You cannot do all of that and do it incredibly incredibly well the people who are doing amazing things across all those channels are not just working by themselves yeah. they have a team of people they have freelancers they have contractors but for that person who's like i'm doing all these things i'm like okay well can you t tell me about your audience size and they're like well my facebook group has 20 people in it my facebook page has 600 followers my instagram my twitter has 20 followers <laughs> my Instagram has a thousand and my, yeah. and my YouTube has 10,000. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, the time for tough, look. like kill everything, but the YouTube channel. That's and they're like, what? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Like yeah. you, you've, you've got something there or and 
there sure there's nuance like maybe your instagram has really high engagement and your youtube doesn't like yeah. sure yeah there there's nuance that you can dissect or dig deeper on but like most people don't have the objectivity on themselves to be like i'm doing too much and i'm doing it all poorly yeah so i need to cut 80 percent of the things that i'm doing to focus on the 20 percent that's actually going to give me the vast majority of my results and i haven't been doing that I haven't been paying attention to my YouTube channel, pu putting links in the right places, doing ad reads for myself, like all these different things. So I think the the biggest like differentiator is focus, okay. being able to be relentless in your decision making and focused on what you do. And how, like, sure, there, there's is there a next stage of the journey where you add in Instagram or you add in merchandise? Uh, to sell yoga mats for your yoga fitness membership sure mm -hmm. but if you don't have all your ducks in a row and then a plan for how you're going to expand to that without diminishing your resources and what you're currently doing to be successful yeah. it's it's not going to go well so to me the thing that's really stood out recently is getting people to focus and work on the the things that are actually driving impact and stop doing the ones that are just wasting their their own time and energy and effort yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, when you said focus, I actually thought that maybe you meant that like focus in the different revenue streams that you're trying to build. Um, but you actually like even one step back, like focus on where you're putting your time in, where you're building your audience, which yeah. makes so much sense. Yeah, everybody wants. I, I think there was like during the pandemic, there was this big thing about like repurposing your content and like creators really took that to heart and they want to be um, omni. Well, it was the same time as short form launching. Yeah, yeah, they want to be omnipresent. I want to be everywhere all the time, and you yeah. know, um, and uh, yeah, I think that's hurting a lot of creators. Yeah, so um, this is good advice. I want to respect your time, Daniel. I know. Uh, this oh, good. Okay, you're good. Okay, I got a couple more yeah. questions. I want to shift topics here, but definitely, mm. clearly, memberships, creator economy. This is definitely your forte. So if anybody's listening up until now, make sure you connect with Daniel on. What's the best place to learn about that stuff from you? LinkedIn and YouTube. I'm assuming. Yeah, like, probably. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll have all the links. So yeah, continue that chat there because you just pu you you guys published a really awesome video around Patreon today. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, go check that out. I'll have that in the links. Um, all right. A couple more questions, and I'm gonna let you run because uh, I'd be amiss if I don't ask you about some of your your dad uh, hacks here. <laughs> uh, okay. Two questions. Two questions, and then I'm gonna let you go. But um, you've got you've got boys. You've got girls. What's the difference? How do you how do you approach being a dad <laughs> to the best? ability and capacity and what they need from you what's the difference between mm -hmm. fathering boys and fathering girls uh don't you have one of each and you're older you like your I kids do, are older you should be the one telling me <laughs> i don't have curious. anything figured out i am the worst <laughs> uh no no from my perspective uh there's there's certainly a difference like so i have two boys that are six and three and then a um an almost two year old daughter. Mm. And I was raised, I just had one brother uh -huh. and older. I don't know. Older. If, yeah, he's older. older. I don't know if I would say like, it was a tough love upbringing. Like my parents love me. Um, yeah. but like I, I'm also the second born. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm more rough around the edges. Like <laughs> I'm a little bit hard headed. Don't follow the rules or rambunctious. Yeah. So like typical, typical. it's, it's, interesting because my oldest son is not at all like that he's very sensitive very thoughtful very helpful mm -hmm. follows the rules to a t and then my second one is exactly like me uh, <laughs> like if you told him hey go run through that wall he'd be like how fast you want me to run <laughs> uh, yeah and then my daughter is just like relatively especially around other people like quiet reserved very sweet uh hap and very happy so it there's a, there's cert, there's a hunt, major difference in how I treat the two groups. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am I'm tough on the boys. Uh -huh. Tougher on the boys than I am my daughter. She gets away. She doesn't get away with everything. I have I still hold her to a standard but like a 2-year-old standard. Yeah. But like she'll she'll all, probably always be able to get away with a little bit more than the boys. And that's I don't know. That's how I was raised, so and I, I, being around little girl growing up is new territory for me. I was always around 
other boys. I was never around other right. girls growing up until, you know, I got into high school or whatever. And right. at that point, it's a different ball game. So I don't know. I'm I'm trying to generally be more patient, uh, slow to anger, quick to kindness right. than right. than I usually am. That's good. I think that's a good I think that, that's good advice. I think that's uh there's there tends to be a secondary or like um uh, uh different standards, I feel like, for exactly what you just said, you know, when it comes to girls yeah. too. I, d- I have learned, I think the way to articulate it is I think um like raising boys and raising girls you sh- you should it's easy it's really easy to do the stuff that they expect that you're kind of expected oh you know i'm gonna be tougher with kid with boys i'm gonna be softer with girls um i think it i think it's important and i've learned this from guys that are older than me and they're like to uh do the things they don't expect that's not stereotypical like so with like raising boys <coughs> like something that i've done with my son since even when he was like a little kid was like just like hug them all the time Dude, don't be weird around hugs. Like, don't be weird yeah. around <laughs> hugs. And so as he got older, even now he's 13, he'll just like, but now he's bigger than me. So it's <laughs> he's just like, like, dude, like, yeah. too much. Like, yeah. he's too big now. He's I've, too big. But I've done know. something very similar with my boys. Like, not to uh, my dad, any fault of my dad's, but like, he was not a, a super affectionate person growing yeah. up, right? Like, yeah, especially when you consider how he was raised, like, every generation gets a little bit better right I think that and generation was like that or maybe the yeah the ge- yeah you're right maybe every generation gets a so little like <laughs> him hugging saying i love you not yeah, things yeah. that really i re- remember much happening yeah. and with my boys like they probably are going to ignore me with how much i'm like hey i love you, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and i give them a hug like every night i'm in there uh giving them a hug reading with them uh and just I'm sure that like different problems, different thing situations I'll encounter than my dad encountered with me and my brother. Uh, but certainly setting a different standard than the one in the house that I grew up with. Right. 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 Which is, it's fun to be able to get to do that. Like there are a lot of things that I, I take from my parents or from my wife's parents. I'm like, yeah, let's do that in our house. And then there are a lot of things where I'm like, no, we're going to do it this way. And, and we'll see what happens. Like I'm doing it be- out of the best intent of my heart, That's right. and I hope I hope that it pans out. And if not, we'll all get to learn from it. Yeah. And yeah, I, exactly. They're never. My kids will never be able to be able to say like I wasn't trying my hardest That's or right. giving it my best. That's right. That's right. Well, I I admire the way that you do it, man. I see. It. I haven't met your kids yet, but they look awesome. Uh, I haven't <laughs> met your wife yet. She looks awesome too. So you know, you guys yeah. are doing a great job. Um, but uh, yeah, you guys seem to be. I think one thing I've noticed with your stuff is you're you're really present. It seems like you guys are always together. You're doing stuff. You're really intentional. You do a thing with um, you do a thing with movie nights, right? Like where you you set up the yeah. the whole living room yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I I love to cook, uh, <laughs> and I love movies, and, and so do the kids. <laughs> yes. So we'll every it's not like a specific cadence. If every now and then we'll like pick a movie try and do a movie the kids haven't seen and then my wife and i like look up stuff on tiktok or pinterest like foods related to that specific movie and then i'll cook it and we'll like sit on the floor and eat while we watch the movie so like a few weeks ago the new ninja turtles movie came out so like we had pizza and (laughs) junk food and like green colored soda or or juice or whatever just look like you know fit in with the movie but yeah we've we've done that a number of times and that's always fun that's awesome man i love that i love that yeah um one of the things i'm doing i'm gonna wrap this up real quick i know you gotta run but um one of the things i saw this guy sam parr if you guys do not follow follow this guy he Mm. uh, he sold his his uh newsletter to um who was it hubspot sold the hustle to hubspot anyways i saw him he just became a dad and he uh on twitter he's like i'm bringing back the home videos and so he's like oh yeah doing like um He's like, yeah, I, I don't that. want like, you know, these 15 second videos that we're so used to now. So I actually started doing that last this weekend. I'm like, hey, guys, mm-hmm. say what's up. I'm not posting this. It's like, what are you guys doing? You know, like old home videos like our, our parents used to have. Yep. And my wife was like, why are you, what are you doing? Are you dying? <laughs> are you sick? Like, oh. I'm like, no, like, I'm trying to bring back the home videos. It's a great idea. I love it. 
Anyways, I, but yeah. you do a great I've, job. I've actually I seen you have so many clips. I feel like uh, of your family. A, a, a lot of clips. Yeah. Uh, I and I'm generally like, I don't actually feel like I'm very good at doing it, but. It, I was doing this like challenge where I was like, po tr I'm still doing it. It's like try to post, publish one video a day for a hundred days. And I've missed a handful of days at this point. But one of the things I've learned from that was like, sometimes it's okay. Like I'm not good at always pulling out my phone and like capturing a moment or, or whatever, because I like overproduce in my head what it has to be. I'm like, Oh, I have to get this angle and then go get this clip and then this, and then I have to edit it together. And doing this challenge has been, kind of freeing because it's like no actually like some days it's just one little 10 second clip yeah. and that's yeah. still like a memory that like i i get to keep and even if it's just one and it's not highly produced like i posted one last night of my son trying to do a push-up in the garage and he's like <laughs> his torso is flat on the ground he's just like pushing with his arms it looks ridiculous and like it's funny but like that took 10 seconds of my day and yeah. you know I'll, I'll be able to walk, look back on that yeah. so easy but i i do love that what you're talking about with the the old kind of yeah. old family style videos i've actually seen a bunch of videographers on youtube like go out and buy old uh, uh camcorders cams. from like the 90s the old sony handy cams and they're filming youtube content with that and then publishing oh. it even if it's just like for a montage like i saw one um we're book we're going to uh on a disney cruise next year yeah yeah um and I saw a guy who was like, it took one on his cruise and then like put together a highlight of a bunch of the clips he took during the week on their cruise, yeah. uh, that vintage video. And it just looks, it looks so cool. And I, I love it. It like takes me back to my childhood yeah, yeah. and it's just kind of like this shared generational experience. And I was like Googling or e looking on eBay, how much <laughs> a Sony <laughs> Handycam was going to cost me. How much are they? Cause they I love like that. Premium? They're like collectibles no. now? I, they're not that expensive. Oh, okay, okay. Um, really, not that bad. I don't probably, remember exactly, but probably expensive. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. No, that's cool, man. Maybe yeah, we can get one that'll record like that and just record to an SD card. <laughs> yeah, right. There's gotta be. There's gotta be. There's gotta be. Yeah. No, you do. It's like the job. Polaroids. They have Polaroids, so. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um. No, man, you do a great job. Uh, documenting better than most. Thanks. Better than most for sure um Appreciate that. awesome awesome well daniel i again respect your time i actually didn't know if you had like another meeting uh but oh, uh but yeah i appreciate you man and uh yeah this has been a really good good catching up um on some of the family stuff too this, this has been fun um yeah and again where can people find you if they just want to learn and kind of see because you're active yeah. on so many places uh you can find me on instagram daniel underscore kazmala or just search my name on uh youtube or linkedin and it should be pretty easy to find me. Oh. K-O-S-M-A-L-A. That's the hardest part. That's it. That's it. Awesome. I'll have all the links in the show notes and description. Thanks, Daniel. Awesome. We'll catch you later. Thanks, Rob.